this is the curse of a general purpose robot, that they're not perfect at any one thing, uh, but they might be able to do a, a wide variety of things. And, and that is, that is the goal at the end of the day. You know, I think we all want to build general purpose robots that can be used for lots of different activities, but it's hard. And, um, and the wisdom in, in building successful robots up until this point have been go build a robot for a specific task and it'll do it very well. Mm -hmm. And as long as you control that environment, it'll operate perfectly. But but robots need to be able to deal with uncertainty. If they're gonna be useful to us in the future, they need to be able to deal with unexpected uh, situations. And that's sort of the goal of a general purpose or multi-purpose robot. And that's just darn hard. And so some of the, you know, there's these curious little failures. Like I remember one of the, a robot, you know, the first the first time you start to try to push on the world with a robot, mm -hmm. you you forget that the world pushes back. And, and will push you over <laughs> if you're not ready for it. And the robot, you know, reached to grab the door handle. I think it missed the grasp of the door handle, mm -hmm. was expecting that its hand was on the door handle. Mm -hmm. And so when it tried to turn the knob, it just threw itself over. It didn't realize, oh, I had missed the door handle. I didn't have, mm -hmm. I didn't, I was expecting a force back from the door. It wasn't there. And then I lost my balance. So these little simple things that you and I would take totally for granted and deal with <laughs> the robots mm -hmm. don't know how to deal with yet. And so you have to start to deal with all of those uh, circumstances. <laughs> well, I think a lot of us experience this in, uh, even when sober, but drunk too, uh, sort of you pick up a thing and expect it to be, what is it, heavy? And it turns out to be light. Yeah, and then you, whoa. Oh yeah. yeah, and then, so the same, and I'm sure if your depth perception for whatever reason is screwed up, if you're if you're drunk or some other reason, and then you think you're putting your hand on the table and you miss it. I mean, it's the same kind of situation. Yeah. Uh, but there's Which is why you need to be able to predict forward just a little bit. And so that's where this model predictive control stuff uh, comes in. Predict forward what you think is going to happen. And then if and if that does happen, you're in good shape. If something else happens, you better start predicting again. So re, re <laughs> like re re uh regenerate a plan. Yeah. When you don't I mean that um that also requires a very uh, fast feedback loop of updating uh, what your prediction, how it matches to the actual real world. Yeah, those things have to run pretty quickly. What's the challenge of running things pretty quickly? A thousand hertz of acting and sensing quickly. You know, there's a few different layers of that. You You want at the lowest level, you like to run things typically at around a thousand hertz, which means that you know at each joint of the robot you're measuring position or force, and then trying to control your actuator, whether it's a hydraulic or electric motor, trying to control the force coming out of that actuator, and you want to do that really fast, something like a thousand hertz, and that means you can't have too much calculation going on at that joint, um, but that's pretty manageable these days, and, and it's fairly common. And then there's another layer that you're probably calculating, you know, maybe at 100 hertz, maybe 10 times slower, which is now starting to look at the overall body motion and thinking about the the larger physics of of the uh, of the robot. Um, and then there's yet another loop that's probably happening a little bit slower, which is where you start to bring you know your perception in, your vision, and things like that. And so you need to run all of these loops sort of simultaneously. You do have to manage your, your computer time so that you can squeeze in all the calculations you need in real time in a very consistent way. Um, and the amount of calculation we can do is increasing as computers get better, which means we can start to do more sophisticated calculations. I can have a more complex model doing my forward prediction and and that might allow me to do even better predictions as I as I get better and better. And and it used to be again we had you know ten years ago we had to have pretty simple models that we were running you know at those fast rates because the computers weren't as capable about calculating forward with a, a sophisticated model. But as as computation gets better, we can we can do more of that.